Well, our top story at this hour, sources are telling Vion at this point that the National Investigation Agency or the NIA has summoned separatist leaders Mirwaz Omar Farooq and Saeed Ali Shah Gilani's son Naseem Gilani in a 2017 case. Now, both the separatists have been summoned in the 2017 terror funding case. The NIA uh, is hearing the case and uh, this hearing will take place on Monday is what we're picking up. Ishan Wali, my colleague, colleague is now joining us live for the very latest on this. And Ishan, uh, well, the crackdown on the separatists and the Hurids continues in Jammu and Kashmir. Fresh revelations suggesting uh, more information about their links with terror groups. Tell us more about this latest arrest. Well, absolutely. The NIA has gone ahead and, uh, you know, cracked down on all the separatist leaders, including the Huriyat, uh, two factions of Huriyat who operate here. One operates under Sayyid Ali Gilani and another one operates under Mirwa Jumar Farooq. Uh, but this time around, interest leaders for the first time that Mirwa Jumar Farooq has been summoned by the NIA, that the National Investigation Agency, the Premier Agency, has been summoned him on Monday to Delhi. This will be for the first time that such a big separatist leader has been summoned by the NIA. Apart from him, Naeem Gilani has already been named by the NIA in a 2017 uh, terror funding case. Uh, so according to sources, both of them have been called to Delhi on Monday. Uh, they were, there are certain evidence and pieces that NIA has collected from both the residences of uh, the separate leaders. Remember, soon after the Pulwama attack, there were searches carried out by the NIA, uh, in not only on the house of Mira Jumar Farooq, where they have taken certain uh, pictures, including other substances that have been recovered from his home. They have taken that to Delhi. And apart from that, we already know that uh, separate leader's son has already been questioned uh, once before in Delhi, you know, for the second time that he has been questioned. At the same time, uh, you know, and I have also cracked down on several separate links in Kashmir and the terror funding in the valley, which has been coming through Hawala routes or several other routes. So there were, actually, to France since 2017, there were small crackdowns going on, but since the Pulwama attack, there has been a certain rise, and the separatists are under this massive crackdown by the enemy. Right, Ishan, stay with us on the phone line. Now, the other big news, of course, linked to this is that according to government officials, the jamaat e islami uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, which was banned by the government of India recently, has established strong links with Pakistan's ISI. It has also been maintaining regular contact with the Pakistani High Commission in New Delhi for promoting separatist uh, in separatism in the state and according to reports the Jamaat Islami has established strong links with Pakistan's ISI for ensuring logistical support for arming, training and supply of weapons to Kashmiri youth and according to the intelligence inputs it has been using its network of schools to spread anti-India feelings among children in the Kashmir Valley Said Ali Shah Gilani and uh, the representative of the Hurriyat has been continuously supporting militancy in Kashmir and even during the Kargil war where he termed the intruders as freedom fighters the jamaat -e islami is opposed to participating in the electoral process and has been pursuing the agenda of setting up an independent theocratic Islamic state by destabilizing the government uh, of law and the outfit uh, was banned twice in the past and was banned again by the central government in February this year. And uh, Ishan, now going back to the point of the crackdown on separatists and the jamaat -e islamis links with the ISI ahead of the general elections is something very, very alarming. Absolutely right. Uh, there's no doubt that Jamaat is first of all linked to the separatist faction, the hardcore separatist faction led by the Sayyid Sheikh Gilani. Uh, the Gilani has its roots in uh, the Jamaat Islami. That's where his origin is. And the residential house that he lives in right now in Srinagar is owned by Jamaat Islami. Interestingly, that hasn't been sealed yet despite the big crackdown on the Jamaat Islami throughout the valley. There are offices, headquarters, and the schools and other establishments that have been sealed by the authorities. But particularly that particular house where the Sayyid Sheikh Gilani resides is owned by Jamaat Islami and hasn't been shut yet. Despite that, uh, you have uh, in South Kashmir, uh, Jamaat Islami has a big uh, you, uh, support base. There have a huge uh, number of people who are associated with Jamaat Islami, and that is where the militancy is on peak, uh, particularly in South Kashmir's Pulwama, Shopian, and Kulgam district. Uh, so somehow government is trying to indicate that because of that particular radicalization process that is taking place in the South Kashmir, uh, that may very well be a part of the Jamaat agenda. Because at one point, MHA sources had said that, uh, you know, that they are trying to give right. support. Not only did they provide logistical support, but also through other means they are providing support to the right. local militants. And all the militants that are local, in particular in South Kashmir, have their origin, have their family background in Jamaat-e-Islami. And that right. is why they are now going big on these organizations. 
All right, uh, Ishan, thanks very much indeed for joining us with the very latest on that crackdown by the NIA and two arrests in that case, of course, also uh, the revelation that the Jamaat-e-Islami has links with Pakistan's spy agency, the ISI.